I'm in League Cemetery, a graveyard. You'll think she's stone cracked. Well, the reason I'm here is because there's so much history associated with this graveyard. I'm told it's the second largest in the country. So after Glasnevin, so there is a lot here. And I always thought League was a bit of a strange name and it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. But I have found out that League comes from Lieg Nemanach, which is named after a particular sacred stone up here where the monks would have had a church years and years ago, possibly an abbey. And it was said that it was St. Patrick himself who would have inscribed something on the rock here. I'll show it to you. So you might be able to see there, there's a kind of a cross surrounded by two circles. And this motif was said to have been given by St. Patrick, or given to St. Patrick by St. Attracta, who would have been one of his disciples. So he is said to have carved it. Now the groundsman here disagrees. He thinks that's a load of nonsense. But for sure, he said, that people would have been saying mass at the highest point in the town, which is here. This is actually the highest point in the whole town. Now the original church that may have been here has long since disintegrated, but there's actually another one that dates back to the seventh century, which would have been built afterwards. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. This though is a bit more mysterious. This is supposed to be St. Patrick's Rock. And as you can see, it's kind of circular in shape and it's got this round little hole in the middle. And people put coins down at the bottom of it and it's said to have healing properties. So I don't know what people have been using it in the past as a cure. Now you have to remember that a lot of these sites, they actually come from way back pre-Christianity anyway, because they were, all, they were all basically repurposed for Christian purposes. So these could well go back thousands of years as sacred stones. Oh, and I forgot to say that St. Patrick actually was said to have chosen this spot to build his church when he was wandering about uh, with Olken, who would have been another one of his disciples or another one of his followers. And Olken was told by Patrick that wherever you drop your axe, that's where you're to build your church. And apparently it was up here that he dropped his axe. I don't know, was he tired or what? I wouldn't blame him after climbing this hill. But uh, he dropped his axe here and this is apparently where the first church was built. Just as an aside, I was told that this pole here is supposed to be a signpost to Lieg Nemanach and it hasn't, it was erected like seven or eight years ago and still doesn't actually have a sign on it, which I just think is very Irish and hilarious. After the original church that was built by the monks, they actually built this church here that I'm actually standing in. This one dates back to the seventh century and we know that by the style. So the masonry is said to be, I hope I can say this, Cyclopean masonry and that is typical of that era and the reason it's called Cyclopean, Cyclopean is because the Cyclops in Greek mythology were said to be giants and the type of masonry that they used was dry stone masonry where they would just stack stones one on top of the other but they weren't just stones they were huge 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 rocks and the walls would be extremely thick to the point that they've managed to withstand the test of time and you've got structures as big as this that are still standing after all those centuries just as I'm passing it here as well I want to show you just a really cool grave I can't actually read the inscription on it it's really difficult to read mad I want that in my grave look at that it's a skull and crossbones and a kind of a snake symbol I think around it mad 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 just down the hill from League you've got this uh, well and it's St. Patrick's well. Now there's more folklore associated with this and the story goes that Patrick came here and baptised a chieftain at the time called Ochad and uh, he used it, he used this very well to do that apparently. Now of course this isn't officially in his writings, this comes from much later hagiographies but there's some great folklore around it including that Ochad's wife who would have been called Ectra was also um, revived from the dead by Patrick somewhere around here at a little ford and so she's remembered here too but you can see St. Patrick there doing the job behind me years ago people would have done stations around these penitential beds that are embedded in the ground here around the well but there's a great story of a woman from out at Mass who came down to the town here to do the stations at the well. And while she was doing the stations, she noticed that there was a man dressed in kind of old fashioned gear doing the stations beside her. So she didn't pay much heed, but your man was kind of anxious and he was moving a little bit faster than her. 
Anyway, the idea was that you finished the stations above at the cemetery up at League. So when she started heading over, your man didn't your man overtake her? And as he was overtaking her, she noticed that he was wearing a priest's collar. And when they arrived up towards League there, weren't they faced with an absolutely horrific sight of some wild, crazy animals? Some of them with two heads, some of them with three heads, some of them with several tails and big fangs ready to tear them apart. Well, anyway, the priest says to her, you go back down to the well, and he gave her a handkerchief, and fill it up, fill up this handkerchief with water from the well. And she said, well, won't the water just seep through the handkerchief? How is it going to hold the water? And she said, well, you just do as you're told. So she down, down she came, and sure enough, she put the, put the water into the handkerchief, and to her surprise, it held in the handkerchief without leaking. So she brought it back up to him and he threw the holy water on the animals and off they, they took. Now after that, your man warned her. He said, don't be coming up here at night time again. So that'll put the frighteners on you. There's also supposed to be a resting place for pallbearers as they would come into the graveyard. For the life of me, I can't find it, to tell you the truth. But the whole idea was that there would be resting places set along the way for people who were bringing their loved ones, their deceased, to their final resting place. And the idea is that they would travel westwards towards the setting sun. And the idea that was to mimic the journey of the soul as it went up into the heavens. I think it's really beautiful imagery. And I wonder myself if it is in fact a remnant of pre-Christian paganism and a belief that held over from there because it certainly isn't mainstream Christianity. So thanks for joining me on my journey around our local graveyard here at League Cemetery. And I'd love to know if you have any interesting stories from any local cemeteries near you. I think there's a whole lot of superstition, understandably, around them. And a certain amount of maybe fear and trepidation, but there's nothing to be afraid of. And I really feel comfortable here. Um, and I think it's just a very peaceful place. It all depends on your outlook, I think. Anyway, slán live.